Hey students, thanks for listening to this Tuesday's devotional. Today we're going to talk about dealing with disappointment. Disappointment's nothing new. Uh, it, I was disappointed a lot before uh, I was quarantined all the time, but it seems like these days there's a little extra disappointment in the air. And so uh, I just thought this was a very pertinent topic for the times that we're living in. But thankfully, God's Word speaks a lot about disappointment and what to do about it and how to cope and how to wrestle with the disappointments that we face. And uh, I hope that you'll be able to be encouraged by God's Word as I have been encouraged by it uh, just in studying for this brief devotional. You know, I've experienced uh, some disappointment recently, as many of you have we recently, just this past week, had to put the final nail in the coffin for our missions trip to Brazil. And that was a big disappointment for me and for all the students that were going to go. Uh, but we're trusting the Lord through it, and uh, this passage here has even brought me uh, a lot of comfort as I've thought about how to think through the disappointments and the, the frustrations that we face in this life. So if you have a Bible, uh, turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And if you don't have a Bible, maybe consider pausing this and going to grab one, and, and that way you can kind of have your, your eyes on the text as I read it. Uh, but this is what it says, 2 Corinthians chapter 4. I want to start in verse 14, and uh, we'll go through the end of the chapter. It says, We know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead will also raise us with Jesus, and present us to you, with you, to himself. This is all for your benefit, so that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. Therefore, we don't lose heart. Though outwardly we're wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Now just reading that at face value, that's really encouraging to me. But I want to dig into it just a little bit deeper for just a few minutes and see exactly what Paul is saying to us in this passage. First, he talks by saying, We know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead will also raise us with Jesus and present us with you to himself. Kind of a lot of words there, but Paul's basically saying, When Jesus died and was raised from the dead, that is the guarantee to you and to me that if we know Christ as our personal Savior, if we have a relationship with Jesus and, and are trusting that his death and his resurrection is, is the only thing that has paid the price for our sins, when we trust in that and when we have a relationship with Christ, Christ's death and resurrection is the guarantee for us that we will also be raised. And that is a powerful thing when you think about it. This life is not all there is. The things that we miss out on on this life, uh, there will be more opportunities. The, the struggles that we feel here, they're not the end of the story. Even the person whose struggles affect them their entire lives, people who, who wrestle with chronic pain or or bodies that don't work correctly, or, or people whose minds are, are affected so much by sin, maybe not even sin of their own doing, people that, you know, struggle with various mental illnesses, and they have a hope that if we know Christ, this life isn't all there is, and there's more to come, and there's, there's uh, so much that is waiting for us. That when we consider that there is more after this, we don't need to be so devastated by the things that happen to us here in this life. He goes on uh, to say, all of this is for your benefit. Um, and, and that's sort of a, a reference to a previous comment. All of this, he's talking about how he teaches God's word. 
and and he says that all of this is for your benefit so that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. Uh, basically, he's referencing a previous comment where he says, look, the reason that we preach the gospel, the reason we say what we say and do what we do and are so bold for Christ is because we want to see the glory of God explode on this earth. Um, and that is only going to continue to intensify throughout heaven as well, throughout eternity. And that's a really important point, especially for anyone who's a pastor or a teacher. Uh, the the motivation for doing what we should do uh, is God's glory, not our own, uh, and not anything else. We want to bring God glory and have thanksgiving overflow from his people on this earth. But I want to keep moving since that doesn't pertain as much to disappointment. This is, this is the real uh, kicker right here for all of us who are struggling with frustrations and disappointment right now. He says, therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we're wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. Guys, the struggles that we face, the pain that we experience, it is real. And Paul recognizes that. He says, it's wasting us away on the outside. Romans chapter 8 talks about how we, in addition to all of creation, were just groaning and, and in pain, like the pain of childbirth, um, waiting for God to return, waiting for the glory that's coming. And so the pain is real. Paul isn't downplaying that so much here, but he says that it has a purpose. And the purpose is that while we may be outwardly wasting away, that causes us to be renewed on the inside. It reminds me of Romans chapter 12, where Paul says, look, you guys should offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. Uh, and, and he continues to say, don't be conformed to the pattern of the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Uh, the renewal that we experience <clears throat> in inwardly is this process of sanctification where God is transforming us to look more like Jesus day in and day out. And that transformation doesn't usually happen when we're comfortable, when things are easy, when life is going exactly how we planned. That transformation happens most of the time when the world is wasting us away on the outside. And that's not very fun uh, it's not a very joyous thought to think about how hard life can be sometimes. And many of us are probably tempted to say, man, I would rather uh, live a comfortable life and you know, forget transformation. Who cares? Uh, transformation, no big deal. But that's God's purpose in our life. And that's echoed throughout Scripture. James chapter 1, many of you guys are familiar with, with the verse that says, You should count it all joy when you experience trials of many kinds. Why? Because the testing of your faith, that produces endurance. That's transforming you. That's, that's going to present you perfect and complete at one point. God's purpose for pain isn't just for us to skip it. It's for us to be transformed by it. If our purpose was just... To be, if the purpose of salvation was just to get us to heaven, then we would be taken up to heaven right after we got saved. But God leads us here to sanctify us and transform us. And um, the good news is, is that this, the transformation that we experience doesn't just affect us here and now, which is cool enough, uh, but it affects us in the future down the road, and it's storing us up for us eternal glory that awaits us. And so that's why Paul says, look, in light of eternity, in light of the glory that awaits us, in light of the blessings of being transformed and being renewed on the inside, <sighs> what we deal with now, the outward stuff that's wasting us away, that in, 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 in light of eternity, it's just a light and momentary trouble. He says, for our, our light and momentary troubles, 
they are achieving for us an eternal glory that far, far, far outweighs them all. That's the perspective that we need to have. And that's why Paul ends with this thought. He says, so in light of that, fix we fix our eyes not on what's seen, not on what we're experiencing right now. We aren't just looking with blinders on at the struggles that we experience now. We're not just focused on what we're missing out on and the disappointments and the things that are canceled and the people that are sick and the people that are dying and the the anguish that we experience now. Rather, we focus on what's unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Aren't you glad that we know for sure that the things that we experience, the disappointments, the struggle, it's all temporary. But there is something coming, something unseen, but that we know is being stored up by our struggles that's eternal. And that's eternal glory that awaits us. And that's not just a glory that we see with our eyes, but it's a glory that we will experience inwardly as well. I hope that's encouraging to you. I hope that as you look at the struggles that you are facing right now, that you are remembering that there is a purpose to your pain. Remember that this life isn't all there is. Christ's death and resurrection is a guarantee that we will live again. And that the struggles that we experience in this life are just light and momentary compared to the glory that awaits us. And that even the struggles that we face are the very thing that builds up that glory that is to come. So be transformed by what you experience. When life throws disappointments and frustrations at you, take it as an opportunity to thank God for another opportunity to grow and be made more like Christ. I hope this was an encouragement to you. If you liked what you heard, feel free to, to like this video, to share it with your friends. Uh, we hope that uh, this was a blessing to you. Thanks for listening.